Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our time together each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time. I'm so honored to be here with all of you. We often struggle as Christians to figure out how to live in this mixed up world fallen and broken, driven by values and views that run furiously against our faith in Christ. Many of you ask, how can you do that? I'm here to encourage you and to show you how you can do it. Yes, it is possible that your solid foundation will change lives and the history. For more information and training, please go after my presentation or during to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. We are here to help you. Some of you wrote me wondering if we should isolate ourselves from such an ungodly world around us or be intimidated by our ungodly culture that believes and tries to judge and make us feel out of step? Or should we embrace even more of the values of our world in order to win more people for Christ, as some people suggest that? Or if there are is another, a better option. I truly believe there is another option. And I experienced cruel persecution and uh, socialists and communists in Romania. And I know that there is a wonderful, a better way to deal. And I'm gonna share with you my experience and God's guidance, protection and victories in my life. You can always read my memoir, Saving My Assassin, right here. Uh, you can buy it directly from my website, virginiaprodanbooks.com, and be encouraged by what God is capable and able to do it. Also, I want to share with you how people before us can help us in our, encourage us during persecution like they encourage me or they can encourage us today. Joseph is one of them and jo Joseph can help all of us today as he walked victoriously with God in an ungodly society. Read Genesis 37. Joseph was betrayed by his brother, sold um, as a slave to Potiphar at age 17. Potiphar very quickly discovered that Joseph was an exceptional wise teenager and was astonished by the success that he had even as a slave. For that reason, Potiphar promoted Joseph to a trusted and significant position in Potiphar's household. But a false accusation from Potiphar's wife led Joseph in jail. Years later, while Joseph was still in jail, Potiphar had a disturbing dream and heard that Joseph has an ability to interpret dreams. And when Joseph, a, a pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret his dream, Joseph confidently pointed to his God, his life solid foundation, by saying to Potiphar, I can tell you, but my God will show you. And God indeed revealed his message to Potiphar through Joseph. Joseph knew his limitation as a human being but he also knew his God and what his God was able. God, Joseph trusted God and in his power, 
Joseph produced fruit in his life around him and changed the history. Like Joseph, we can be confident under any dark or hard circumstances, and we can say like him, I can, but God can. Joseph had a solid foundation in God and for his life. So for us, we need, like Joseph, to build a solid foundation in God for our family, for our business, for our future to live for God in this mixed up world, fallen and broken, driven by values and views that run against our faith in Christ. After we build this life solid foundation, here are the three steps to consolidate our lives and to receive God's guidance and victory in us and for us and around us. Number one, do what God requires you to do, regardless of the consequences, the threats around you or against you. Yes, sold into slavery in Egypt, Joseph served God and served Pharaoh and quickly learned a high position in Pharaoh's household. But as a young, handsome man, he drew the sinful attention of Potiphar's wife who tried to seduce him. But Joseph refused to betray God, read in Genesis 38, 8, 9. Joseph knew that sinning against Potiphar and his wife was wrong and it was offensive to God. Nevertheless, Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph and Joseph was thrown in jail. Remarkably, he was thrown in jail for obeying God. And sometimes we can experience that too. Yet, God was with Joseph in jail, showing him love and favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. God will be with us. Doing what is right in God's eyes rather than men's ways is always the right thing, even if there, there are negative ramifications or hard consequences. Be confident and do what is right anyway, as God will take care and reward all of us who obey him, just like he did with Joseph. Be encouraged. Number two, God is sovereign over our lives and rely on God's guidance to prepare you for today and for your future. Yes, Joseph experienced many dark, dark days. He also rose to power, wealth, and prominence. His brother hated him. They sold him into slavery. He spent years in jail for choosing to obey God. And he was forgotten for a very long time by those that he held. Despite all these trials and sufferings, Joseph kept his faith in God. In the storms of life, in your um, life, in your business, in the darkness moments, hold on tightly, tightly to God's promises, knowing that He is and He will be with you. You are His child. Joseph encourages other, us to glorify God even in dark places and to give Him credit for carrying us through those dark places and circumstances. I know you might think living up to the life of Joseph is impossible, but God called all of us to the same destination, to the same job like Joseph. Joseph walked with God and his character. The vir virtues he lived by are indeed attainable for all of us who desire to walk with Christ. I promise you. Through his life, God blessed Joseph with the ability to interpret dreams, and he um, 
gave, uh, gave you some specific skills. Joseph interpreted uh, Pharaoh's dreams that Egypt will have seven years of bounty followed by seven years of famine. And because of that, Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of preparing his nation, and in fact, other nations too. God enabled Joseph to have the wisdom and guidance to perform a very, very difficult task for a very good and specific reason. And because of that, people in Egypt were able to eat during the famine, and people from all over the world came to buy the food during the time as well. God has a plan for your life too. Relying on God for wisdom or direction is always the best place to start preparing for today <coughs> and for the future. And number three, extend forgiveness no matter your sufferings or your injuries. The famine forced Joseph's brothers to journey to Egypt for the needed food, as you all know. They did not recognize Joseph as the second man in command of the most powerful nation in the world at that time. But Joseph recognized his brother at first sight and wept several times in private. Joseph, who knew his amazing, loving, and sovereign God, gave his brothers, forgave his brothers for their wrongdoing sincerely proclaiming to them this. And now do not distress or angry. Do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. Genesis 45, 5 to 8. So, Joseph, because of that, did not hold a grudge. He was ready to extend forgiveness with open arms and heart to his brother, as he said to them, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Genesis 50, 20. Be sure you know and act as God is in charge of your life and your destiny and your future and the future of your family and in charge of the future of our nation. Joseph is a great example today for those who struggle with forgiveness because forgiveness, patience, and grace are so important. They can bring all of us closer to Christ. Our situation are far removed from those of Joseph. We all know that. But we all are called to live for Christ in an ungodly culture too, like he lived. And God will be with us and God will give us success and victories as he was with Joseph. Often, God places us in a dark world, to bring his light in us to brighten the darkness around us and to bear on the gloom and guide those stumbling in the darkness. So let his bright light shine in you, no matter your circumstances, because you are here and you are here for a reason. And you can say, I can, but my God can. And then go and with Christ 
shine the place where he put you in and live for him and trust God to give you success and victories because he will do it for his glory. Imagine what a year from now could look like in your life, your family, your health, your wealth, your freedom, and your business if you stop following those steps today. All is possible with God, with his vision, goal, and your consistent align steps, daily steps and action over time. I promise that you will be able to do it, this. I'm here to encourage you and to show you and to help you to do what you are able to do, to change your life, life around you, and through you to change the history. There is power in us. Your life purpose is bigger than you can dream or imagine. It can be done if and when you apply those steps that I explained to you correctly and consistently. For more training on this, please go to virginiapradanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. I'm here to help you. I'm honored to guide you in your steps. Until our next time together, each Wednesday, at Saturday, Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time, be blessed and keep in touch. Bye-bye.